if you look at our history as a country, we have had conflict at the commission between the secretariat and the commissioners. We have in case in 2013 of Hassan and uh, Oswago. In 2017, we had the case of Wafula Chebukati and Ezra Shiromba that, we play, that played in the Seriously, we have had a litany of conflicts at IBC between the Commission and the Secretariat. We also had cases of conflict between Wafula Shebukati and the three other commissioners, Wafula Shebukati and uh, Akombe, and finally Wafula Shebukati and the four commissioners. There must be something that is not right, either about the person who was holding the office or the structure or both. And that, to me, is something that I would plead with this committee to deal with. Because all the years, we have had commissioners being taken away or moving out of the commission, they are just away, but nobody, no investigation has been carried to determine what is the cause of this. Probably, you are the privileged committee to address that issue for the sake of our future as a country. And I would plead that you look at which areas are conflicting. We'll give our proposals, but mainly we'll be looking at you to look at that. I also want to look at the removal of the four commissioners, uh, generally known as uh, the Shalela Four. I want to submit that the Shalela Four were forced to resign. It was never our intention to resign. And therefore, we'd want to ask that the reason why the Shalela Four were removed from a office is because they questioned the process that the chairman used to declare the results. And uh, my colleague will be coming to that in a short while. Our descent to the way the chairman handled the tallying of the results in 2022 election was within our mandate because it is for the commission to tally and for him to declare. Unfortunately, the commission was not offered an opportunity to do that. We never tallied the results from the constituencies and they were tallied by a hard-picked number of people who worked with the chairman. Uh, two, we want to submit to this committee that there is a prescribed format for declaring a member of parliament, a governor, a woman rep, all elected positions. And there is a statutory form that should be filled to show the result of that particular person. For our case, we as the commissioners, it is a, for the presidential result, we are supposed to fill form that foresee which is a summary of all the results from all the constituencies in the country. That is the result form. We want to submit that that was never submitted to us. What we got from the CEO through the from the CEO then to the chairman and the commissioners is a three a three or four page summary of all the counties, the 47 counties. So, as we sit, we have never seen from that 4C, which is the presidential resort form. And that is the reason why we say it was unfair for us to be forced out of the commission, and we hope that that would be looked into. Now, our recommendation as we move to our recommendation, uh, 
One, we hope that uh, sooner than later, the IBC Commission is going to be constituted as quickly as possible. There are several issues, including border delimitation, which is a very urgent issue. We are hoping that as soon as possible, the Commission is going to be constituted. Now, number two, the Commission, acting as a technical full-time Commission, is essentially not only non-strategic, it is also policy-oriented. It must have elaborate rules for the Commissions, responsibility of the Commissioners, a framework to recognize, to organize the Commission in such a way that the Commissioners are responsible for the directorate they head. What we have currently is a situation whereby the CEO of the Commission is running the Commission. However, the Commissioners head certain committees. I'll give you an example. When I was at the Commission, I was the chairman of finance and the supply chain committee. However, in the law, the work of the supply chain, the person who is answerable is the CEO. The according to the Public Finance Management Act, he is the same person responsible for the finances of the commission. What is the role of a chairman of a committee like that one in IBC, even if you are a commissioner? literally nothing and that is what we find and these are the legal issues which you think the structure of the commission needs to be addressed and unfortunately enough the supreme court did address itself and said that there needs to be uh, the corporate governance within the commission need to be addressed what we are proposing is that one would like to request or to consider that we use the Ghanaian model of the Commission, whereby we are suggesting the, the chairman of the Commission with two deputies becomes the accounting officer. They are full-time commissions. We are suggesting that the Commission be led by the chairman and the commissioners who are full-time and accountable. So the accounting officer of the IBC should be the chairman of IBC. So that we do not have a law whereby the resources are being accounted for by the secretariat and the commission is just there to oversee or to oversight. The responsibility of the commission to, dev to, to, to manage the elections in any country is very high. Therefore, I would suggest that we do not consider the commission like other palestinos or board of governors organizations. Um, the Ghanaian model also, I would suggest, in the selection of the selection of the select committee that is going to be used to to interview the commissioners. The Ghanaian model is also very good. I suggest that you can look at it. You don't have to adopt it, but you can adopt it according to our, what you want as a country to fit our country. I'm going to suggest it because the chairman of the Electoral Commission of Ghana is a former Chief Justice. Then they also have a former Chief of General Staff, a former IG of the police and the other commissioners. But that team, in our country, I was also going to suggest that probably Council of Governors should be members of the select committee. You could have two people, one from the minority, one from the majority. These are our suggestions it's for consideration. Finally, um, The decision must be made 
where the law in the, or the constitution provides the mandatory function of the commission, for instance, at the Article 138, the commissioners have the elect role in the verification declaration of presidential results. In relation to such, the CEO, for example, last election, the CEO and the Professor Gullier were the ones who were given the mandate by the chairman of IBC to do the tallying. That information was not. That was not a delegated responsibility by the commissioners to the CEO. And it is an appointment that was made by Mr. Chebukati. I don't think that is within the law. So with those few remarks, I wish to ask my brother to take up the next part of presentation. Asanteni Sana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Wanderi. Um, may I uh, add that the process of election in Kenya must observe uh, several values. And these are the values upon which uh, any election can actually be judged upon. They're simple, it is simple, it is secure, it is accurate, it is accountable, it is verifiable, and it is transparent. If we don't have any of those, or some of those, in the values of running an election, then we know that we are doing very badly. Um, uh, the Maina Kiai and the IBC case that came up shortly before the 2017 elections um, was um, around the issues of Article 86 and 138 of the Constitution and Section 39 of the Elections Act. And the upshot of uh, the decision was in fact um, or of timely electronic transmission of the election results and also the materiality of results transmitted electronically and essential consistency with results transported physically for telling at the constituency, constituency telling center. The effect of the minor key decision and amendments to section 44 and 39 were intended to give effect to articles 86 and 138 by legislating mandatory electronic transmission which mirrors and has the same effect as the physically transmitted research declaration forms through the physical tabulation chain. And this is the reason why the country spent millions of money to secure an electronic voter system. Now, I just want to talk about the accountability of polling station results. And this is how this worked. And uh, it worked according to how we had discussed that by operation of section 39 the commission is statutorily required to electronically transmit tabulated results and an image of the result declaration form confirming the authenticity of the polling uh, uh, station results the process for accountability of presidential results contemplated three things in order to achieve the verifiability and accountability under Article 89. First, the presiding officers are expected to send one, a tabulated result of the polling station. Two, the image of the polling station results declaration form. And three, physical result declaration uh, forms transferred to the returning officer. The technology investment by the Commission ensured the presiding officers could transmit tabulated polling station results currently, concurrently with the image 
of the result declaration forms. The tabulated results will give the country a running tally of the results on real-time basis. As the Secretariat and the Commission and the country were tabulating the running results from the fields will be seen will be seen on the screen. The tabulated results will give the country a running tally of the on real time basis. The presiding officers are also required to transmit the image of the result declaration form based on time stamps, location stamps, Kimskit QR code serial numbers and other specifications provided in the Kim's technology. That is how it was envisaged. Now, how did we do it? The chairperson unilaterally took the decision to deny the country the benefit of a running tally based on tabulated results <coughs> as a counter check of the transmitted images and the results declared in the constituency tallying centers and the national tallying center. This was stopped. As commissioners, we therefore did not know the running uh, tabulation. People at home that were doing this with us also were at a loss. It is because we stopped doing this. Some of us discussed this with the chairman and said, 2017 is a bad memory for IABC. That is the time that uh, um, the, the organization was accused of, I think it was called the Vifaranga yeah, computer thing. We were manufacturing uh, results. And I said, Mr. Chairman, you need to organize this. And he said, I am busy right now, but I will sort it out later. It was never sorted out. By IBC taking an ad hoc administrative decision in violation of Section 39 and sending an image, it ensured that it did not tabulate the electronic results. This deliberately put the country in the dark and results remain indeterminate. Secondly, the IABC failed to undertake electronic tabulation and publication of constituency tallying of presidential results. This violation had two effects. One, it ensured that the country had no electronic source to countercheck the results obtained from the portal. Nor did it have the benefit of tabulated results by the institution that is constitutionally mandated to undertake tabulation. This shifted, therefore, the returning officer's obligation under Article 86 and 138 to the chairman as the sole returning officer working with officials at the turning center who have no statutory role or clear procedure of delegation by the commissioners. It ensured neither us as commissioners nor the county had effective accountability framework for the results. That was the upshot of that. The effect 